Okay, what we're going to do in this demo is kind of walk you through this goodbye project. So if you go to our GitHub, Red Hat, dash, hello world, dash, MSA, goodbye, you're going to see two little projects in there, a client and a server. And the point of this particular demonstration is to kind of make the point for Hystrix and why you want a circuit breaker as an example. So on the server side, it's very, very straightforward. It is a Wildfly Swarm application, which Wildfly Swarm is your embeddable application server inside your Uber jar or fat jar. And inside that um, is, is a basic JAXRS endpoint. So we have a, a goodbye and we have a nap. Okay, and so the goodbye is just like you would typically have in a typical API, and the nap is specifically has a sleep in it, right? Uh, so sleep for 30 seconds. And so the whole purpose of this illustration is to kind of make the point of why things, how things can break when your application is slow. So you don't want a cascading failure, you don't want a, a failure that basically moves throughout the system uh, based on a slow endpoint. So that's really what this is trying to illustrate. So let's see if we Let's go and get started. We're going to bring up, uh, we're going to run the server side. So I'm going to do MVM uh, Maven Wildfly Swarm Run, and that's going to bring up our server side endpoint. And actually, in the browser here, we can kind of go hit it. Let's see there. So there it is. Just says goodbye and provides the current date timestamp. And then we have the client side. So on the client side, let's kind of look at that client real quick. It's very straightforward. Uh, let's go main.java uh, for. It's going to basically launch 100 threads at that endpoint, right? So it's going to basically either use the HTTP client, and we're going to show you the timeout HTTP client and the Hystrix client. So the HTTP client uh, from Apache is very straightforward. It's going to hit the API slash nap, which is the one with a 30 second uh, sleep in it. And then that's it, right? It's just going to try to hit that endpoint. So if we go over here, and, and actually let's do this real quick. So let's take our server side down. Let's say the server's missing in action. Let's watch what happens with the client the client is going to immediately fail. So the good news here is the client immediately fails, and that's what we want, um, based on this exception. So it's always good, but typically in a scenario where you're connecting client server from one place to another, if the service is completely gone, you do fail fast. But what happens if you fail slow? Okay, so in this case, we're actually going to have our service running, so it's not going to fail based on the lack of connection. It's essentially going to fail based on the fact that the service endpoint is incredibly slow. So now if we run our client, uh, what we're going to see is the client's going to spin up its 100 threads, and those 100 threads are now being spun up on the server side. So basically 100 threads from the client create 100 threads on the server based on that client-server connection it's made. And again, it's just a standard HTTP GET in this case. And you can see it's kind of waiting for us to finish. Now if I go back to my browser over here real quick, I can hit, you know, right, all right. So it's still, it's still working. Um, but it did create 100 server-side threads, and the client is still waiting. The client is blocked, waiting for those 30 seconds um, to expire. And you kind of see now, okay, there's the 30 seconds all expiring, and you can kind of see what happens there. Okay, so the server responded, the client uh, accepted the request or response to its request, and all was good. So that is fine, other than the fact that I don't necessarily want my clients blocked waiting if I have a very long service invocation. It very well could be that the service is very, very busy, there's a lot of stuff going on inside that service, and you don't want the client to wait. So that's the next iteration of this. Let's go back over here. We show you what, how do you do the timeout. All right, so network timeouts are incredibly important when you're dealing with microservices. You don't want to wait forever. You want to have a nice timeout. So if I say open declaration here, you can see this actually sets the connection timeout and the socket timeout. So that way it falls back more quickly when in fact, um, when in fact uh, there's no, the server is acting slowly, right? The service is coming back slowly. So it has a one second timeout. So let's, let's try that. Okay. And let's start, let's do a Maven compile exec. So it should compile. And if you notice, it's, the client is no longer waiting for the server but the server still has 100 threads queued on it. So 100 threads are still queued on the server, and the client is no longer even waiting. So it waited one second per request, and then it, failed, it, did, it had its fallback. So the good news is the client is much better off in this case, right? It, was, it fall back, falls back quickly, but the server still has 100 threads queued on it, and it's still waiting. And then actually, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it finish this 30 second interval to kind of make that point. So now it's back, and so it's responding to those 100 requests, but let's actually kind of hit it a little bit harder. So I'm going to actually run up another 100 requests, 100 threads queued, and our client will finish very, very rapidly, and then let's run up another 100 uh, threads, okay? So in this case, the client is really hammering on the server, because this is typically what happens, right? Typically, your users love to hit your refresh button 
and say, no, no, give me a request. And you can see what's happening now. I'm hitting the refresh button, but things are kind of locked up here because at 200 threads, the server is pretty busy at this point. So therein lies the problem with the basics of the timeout handler. While it helps the client tremendously, your server still essentially has had a denial service attack. Now that it's responded to those 200, or at least the first 100, yeah, so it's the first 100, um, at this point, you know, now the service is responsive again. So that is really the fundamental problem with just relying on basic timeouts. And that is, um, with the basic timeouts, you, you basically can have your client overwhelm your server still yet. So the last iteration of this demo is to show you Hystrix, right? So Hystrix has a circuit breaker built in. So in addition to have the timeout based on the client, it also realizes the service is overwhelmed and unavailable because it's not getting responses back. So it's actually monitoring the request and the responses and understanding its timing interval and what the responses look like. In the case of Hystrix, it's going to then only queue up so many, um, so many requests on the server side. So let's go over here and look at that code. You can see it's very straightforward when it comes to Hystrix. We're using Hystrix and Fane. Uh, and, and you can see it's fairly straightforward, right? So just basically make that call into the NAP uh, URL and see how it comes out. So let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restart my server just to make sure everything's nice and clean. All right. So then again, uh, just so you know, that is the, the uh, let's kind of open that up actually to make it, let's go look at it just so you can see what that guy's like. Uh, source, Dubai, server. This is the, again, it's a Wildfly Swarm. So it is the, fat jar right there, so it's the large jar, basically with the app server and everything you need embedded in it. So that's how the JaxRS is executing. Again, that works like Drop Wizard or Spring Boot is another example. Um, all right, so our server is back up. Let's rerun our client. In this case, you're gonna see, it should be 10 client requests queued, okay? So only 10 uh, uh, server requests were queued and are now waiting, but the client had immediate fallbacks, okay? So you can see that there's immediate fallbacks for the client side, which is what we wanted because the server's taking too long. But at least in this case, the server is not getting pounded with 100 threads or 100 requests. It's getting pounded with 10, uh, 10 requests. And so when you're dealing with microservices architecture, you've got to be thinking these kind of patterns through. What happens when you have a failure in one component of the overall architecture? In our case, we're using Hystrix to deal with the circuit breaker. And if you look at our larger demo, uh, the one that actually is still sitting in my screen flow back here. If you look at back at our larger demo, you will see exactly how that circuit breaker gets executed.